Thanks. Next item is discussion item, policy updates, policy guidelines, 5460, graduation requirements. Dr. Glenn Maleko and Mr. David Mastoni. Good evening, board members. Uh, we did have a policy committee meeting uh, back in uh, June. And uh, at that meeting, we discussed we needed to bring uh, that one, uh, one of our policies just needed to be updated so it was in line with current graduation standards. We also added uh, an elective alternative for our uh, magnet school program and, that, and for newcomers as well. And that was, the, that, that was the policy change. The committee reviewed it and uh, was in agreement with all of those changes. Any questions? Any questions on the policy and the change being recommended? Trustee Petlitschkoff? I just wanted to, um, because we're having this on the graduation requirements, I just saw um, something in an article about, uh, I, I forget what state it was, Idaho, Iowa, I, who knows, um, but that one of the things we were trading out for some of their PE um, credits for graduation was um, students volunteering um, to work in the community doing um, yard work and maintenance work on um, for the senior citizens and or physically disabled uh, neighbors in place of like half a PE credit kind of thing. So it was doing something good for the community while maybe giving them an opportunity where they were maybe not so keen on the regular PE program. Um, and I thought it sounded like a really unique concept that maybe we could start to um, have a conversation about as a way to encourage um, community contributions and make it meaningful. So the physical education requirement we have right now is a state requirement, and they right. are the ones that allowed us to swap out the sports or the band. So, I mean, I can ask MDE if they have any thoughts. If they but have really thoughts, a, it's right. Yeah, it's to start the conversation maybe. Absolutely. Would be a great idea. Any additional comments? So this is only a discussion item. We'll be voting on that next. Uh... All right. Next item. Dearborn Public Schools, City of Dearborn, Student and Community Safety Agreement, Dr. Glenn Maleko, yeah, Mr. Robert to... Ati, Mr. Yeah. John Leacher. Okay. Um, David, could we? If we could pull up the updated interlocal agreement on the screen so all the trustees can see it. Uh, everyone had a chance to give feedback on what we had been presented previously about the agreement with the city regarding access to the cameras that are in the buildings. So we've got some updates that are available. And then we can also ask questions uh, to see if there's additional things that, that need attention. Uh, as I've stated previously, my goal would be for us to uh, vote on this sure. before classes start. So we've got uh, the August meeting to get this completed. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we're going to be able to put it on the screen, but I'll, sh I'll share it with okay. the trustees. Okay. Okay. Great. So everyone can get it on their screen. Oh, we might go. Okay. Okay, it looks like. Yeah. Oh, it's on the screen there for in here. Yeah. Is it on the screens up there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so everyone can see it. Yeah. All right, thanks. If you really just want to go through some of the things that have been updated, uh, that would be the main things that we'll want to discuss then. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board and Dr. Maleko, got to get used to the mic. Technology <laughs> guys got to get used to the microphone. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, you might not want to hear me talk too much, but uh, after I go through all the, the details with this, but uh, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to go back. We've taken some of the feedback and suggestions from previous meetings and looked at clearing up some of the language with questions that um, 
were brought to our attention. So in doing so, in uh, the agreement under number one, we looked at adding some language right there to clarify uh, the description of how we would be able to take care of everything. And with that being said, we looked at how we would be able to determine if someone has uh, had access to the cameras or not. So um, I know it was mentioned about the possibility of having an alert sent, but uh, with the current technology infrastructure that we have in place, we are not able to do that. However, we are able to audit and see who um, has accessed the uh, cameras. And so we would be able to provide um, information on that. We would be able to look at which accounts are being able or being accessed at that time as well. We um, wanted to make sure that we also had points of contact in here as well too. And so um, if someone were to leave employment with the Dearborn Police Department, we would have a contact notify a designee to let us know that um, the um, credentials for that individual would no longer be able to access the cameras. If I can add too, we had another meet, we've had many meetings on this. Some they met without me and some, and then today we had another meeting and Trustee Mose of you talked to me on Friday. So we, we put some comments in relative to that and then I got back to you. But we also put in there, and I don't know, I was on the side talking to David, but um, you know, the board is used to our normal incident report anyway. And so any kind of a thing that may involve this would be an incident report anyway, because it'd be something the board would get informed of. So one of the things I put in there was that the board would then be notified. And then John Leacher and I talked about, you know, since we, the technology doesn't allow, um, uh, um, you know, as Bob's saying, to do the automatic notification, that we would set it up so that there would be an email that would also go from the city, you know, the people at the, um, the dispatch. dispatch. Thank you for the word. I was going to say switchboard, but dispatch. <laughs> dispatch. John had, and that they would have then email the, the um, director of technology and the director of safety and uh, supervisor to, to confirm if they used it. So that'd be another layer of responsibility. And then we would obviously, you know, the, of the board incident reports, we update it as anyway. And so we would do an update and you would be notified. And then in there, we also put that the superintendent could request additional audits as necessary. So if we feel there's something going on, then I can request not just the one to two times a month, but we could actually request more if we, for some reason, you know, I'm talking to the board president or a trustee, then it, I could go to them and request that through Mr. Addy or whoever the director is at the time. But we think he's going to be there for several, many years, so. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's something I don't so. know. <laughs> uh, and then I know I appreciate the comp the trustees really, you guys are the ones that helped us with this. Um, you know, several trustees have given feedback, and so that's why we put in the, these um, you know, changes. Now, this has gone through our attorney, so our attorney is okay with is good with everything. But again, it, because we made some tweaks, it would have to go through the city just so that everyone that understands, just question. to make sure that they're they don't see any issue. But it did go through our attorney. Um, you know, with the, the tweaks and the changes that we've made. But the city has not seen Correct, that. correct. Yeah. Although I've spoken generally to, you know, Chief Haddad about some of the changes, but he hasn't, uh, I think the first revisions that he received, um, but we would obviously have to make sure that, right. that they um, were comfortable. But I don't, I think it's more of the things in this, of the changes is more about what we're doing versus yeah. what they're doing, to be honest. If you look at, um, you know, in our Their responsibility the role remains the same, yeah, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, like the incident report, they have nothing to do with yeah. that, that, other than maybe the email piece or, you know, those kind of things, so. And we refined it and listened. And Under section number three, we also made additional changes in there. <coughs> If you go on further, we clarified it a little bit more under um, 3B, also indicating in terms of what level of access there would be in there too, in terms of if there was information that was uh, under FERPA and making sure that that type of inf information is protected. Trustee Moser. Uh, two questions. One, uh, there in the paragraph on um, item number one, second paragraph, where it says, upon termination of employment, the Dearborn Police Departments will notify the school district designee to eliminate account access of the former employee. <clears throat> so for the VPN, 
is, are we giving it to specific city of Dearborn employees or are we giving them a service account? <laughs> what we would like to do is to issue individual accounts. That way we know exactly who's going in there and accessing the cameras. If we were to create a generic account that says um, City of Dearborn Police, what well, would happen? Anybody, if I shared my credentials with someone else, we, wouldn't, we would know somebody accessed it, but we would not know who accessed it. Issuing credentials to specific individuals is more accountability on that part, and so that's why we looked at that as an option. And all of these designees will be in 24-7 kind of monitoring. Is that, you leave that to the police because say at the 18th hour none of these designees are working so how would they be able to access the system if there is an incident that require that requires access so because this is a live feed what would happen is when the Dearborn police individual that's at the dispatch center is logging in with their credentials we see that they're going in they have access to the feed for a very specific building in a specific location like that. And I would just say we would have enough people identified, and, and Trustee Watts asked us, the, there'll be a list, so we'll know, but we would have enough so there's coverage. Uh, you know, John, whoever the dispatch people are trained will make sure that there's enough in there so there's coverage um, to make sure that someone has access if they need to, you know. But I, I think, John, you had said, too, that we'll get a list from the... the um, of those that are trained at the dispatch and we can know who they are. I mean, we didn't see a problem with that, right? Yeah, and I did some follow-up on that um, today just to confirm what I already pretty much knew, which is that um, dispatch personnel go through extensive training. I mean, they go through a lot of training to know how to dispatch runs or how to be call takers, to get information they need to pass on to, to officers. And that training's ongoing, <clears throat> excuse me, yearly there's updates on that. A lot of the in-service training that the officers go through um, the dispatches are going through in Dearborn as well, which I think is outstanding. So, um, and there just as a, as, as, um, uh, just as a, a foundation, um, I know that because I did background investigations for a t part term in my career, when you do it in, uh, you think of a background investigation with a police officer is really, really extensive, right? I mean, you're talking about going out and talking to, to any job that this person's had, high school counselors, high school principals, high school teachers, just to kind of get a feel for how this person's been pretty much through their, their whole life. Well, that same type of background investigation takes place with, uh, with, with dispatch personnel as well, um, not to mention a very formal uh, and standardized uh, communications training programs so with communications training officers that actually put these seasoned dispatchers that put these new dispatchers through training. It's, 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 it's ongoing. So, um, and, and I wasn't surprised when, when I was advised that this is exactly what our dispatchers go through here. So they're very highly trained. Um, I'm sorry, just one okay. follow-up. Um, I'm just glad that we took the feedback to mention that this is only going to be used um, when there is a serious crime that may um, cause physical harm. Um, so with that being said, there's a lot of misinformation and people only hear snippets and rumors spread and that th this will be a life fee to the police whenever they want for whatever reason they like, So, uh, which is not the case. So. Is there um, a plan to have this agreement once it's ratified to be public? When do we do we publish this? When How do we, we publicize it? it to everyone in the district? And that too. Okay. Yeah, we can. I mean, it's it it is a public document, so um, you know we can make sure we get information out as, as necessary. I have no problem with putting that out. We'll, David and I will sit down and the team and we'll figure out how we. I would think that would be very helpful because the absence of information, then misinformation will the rumors, come in. The rumors, the rumors continue went. to, so, yeah. Um, if this, obviously this sure. is going to be approved or asked to be approved next meeting, so I would hope that, the, obviously, as part of the documents that it will be posted for people to see what we're voting on as far as the full agreement, since now they're seeing it on the screen as well. Any additional comments? All right, thank you very much. Next item, please. Board of Education Business, Acknowledgement of Correspondence. 
I think uh, there were some emails and I was responding to them on behalf of the board. Uh, I don't recall seeing anything mailed. Next item. Board member committee and organization reports. Did we have any committee meetings since we last met? Nope. All right, next item. Request for information and- uh, Board member superintendent oh, sorry, commentary. Yeah. Board member superintendent ahead. commentary. I want to finish the night. <laughs> Uh, I'll mention one thing. Uh, we are about to get to the primary votes here in the city of Dearborn. Uh, so uh, everyone, please take the time to get out there and exercise your right to vote. Uh, it'll be in a lot of our own buildings that people will have a chance to go in if they're going to do it in person. Uh, and it is going to be on August 3rd. Next so, Tuesday. Next Tuesday. So uh, please take the time to uh, make your voice heard. Thank you. Trustee D'Ambrosio. Yes, uh, we're gonna have our second annual chicken dinner fundraiser for uh, all of our nonprofit, uh, most of our nonprofit organizations. And it'll take place at the old uh, Kroger's on the north side from four to 7.30. So come and enjoy a good chicken dinner. And What's the date? August 7th. Homecoming. Is that, is that a Saturday? Saturday? Homecoming weekend, yes. Yeah, it's a that would have been the Saturday, so Saturday, August 7th? Yep. Great. 4 to 7.30. All right. Thank you. Any additional board member commentary? Trustee Moser. A couple of points. Um, first one, regarding AC and, and our schools, um, I know many parents reach out to me regarding uh, the AC and obviously in some schools, unfortunately, they are very old. They don't have history of having AC uh, in the classrooms. And this is something to consider, obviously, for future funding. Uh, uh, we will be asking the voters uh, to do that. We have an aging infrastructure. Um, to uh, decide whether we would invest in our old buildings or we would invest in newer buildings. Um, which leads me to my second point, which is the taxes consideration. With the recent flood and uh, the city of Dearborn uh, City Council passing um, a millage or a renewal of their millage or putting it on the ballot. I'm sorry, it. putting it on the ballot for voters to decide if they want to approve the supplemental um, millage that uh, was approved by the voters back in 2011 and then again in 2016. Um, and with funds coming from the state uh, based on project funding and then uh, I was reading in the paper that it's $1.17 billion of coming to schools right now from the state government. Uh, I believe that something that we should consider and from LACO to contemplate on it is to uh, perhaps hire a full-time grant writer for our district. Um, I know we do write grants here and there, but I, I believe it might be uh, something to consider uh, for the future. Um, with that being said, uh, a lot of conversations on taxes, and obviously the school district levies taxes and needs the uh, taxpayers' help in order to maintain our buildings and build newer schools. That's a conversation to have um, and to watch also as we wait to fund the city to keep its operations as well at those levels. Uh, my last comment is... Uh, to echo President Thorpe about the elections. Uh, it, it is very important to participate in municipal elections. Usually people don't vote as much as they do in even years in presidential elections. But if these floods have taught us one thing, that uh, local officials do matter. Um, and they, they, if they directly affect the day-to-day -day operations of our cities. Um, so... Saturday, I believe this, the city is open also for early voting or if you want to vote early um, with the passage of 2018 uh, um, reform uh, for the uh, 
voting, now you can vote with no reason. You don't have to present a reason you can vote whenever you like. So election is August, August 3rd. I would encourage everybody to go out and vote and exercise their right there where you make your uh, voice heard. Thank you. Jumping on the back of what Trustee Mosab just said with air conditioning, uh, this is a year we're hearing more about it than other years because we've got such an expanded summer school program. And I had one parent approach me that said that if our PTA has money and we want to get some portable air conditioners into the building, can we do it? And I said, well, that's fine that it takes care of that funding, but a lot of our buildings are very old. The infrastructure was not made for even all the computers that we've got in some of these buildings. So you might be able to solve the first problem, but there's usually one or two that are hiding behind it. So uh, we'd love everyone to be in the buildings comfortable. Uh, I don't know if we would wish for 80 and 90 degree days six months from now, um, but uh, people need to keep that in mind when we're, we're looking at those things. Additional comments? Oh, Dr. Maleko. Yeah, if I can add on the air conditioning too, um, we have some good experience and knowledge because Salina, our oldest building, uh, if you recall, the board approved, but basically we had from a um, company donation and phases. So we know what it takes to um, upgrade the air conditioning and the cost effectiveness. You also have to look at the electrical grid. We literally had to increase the electrical and then actually lower some of the electrical usage of other things in the building to make that happen. Um, it was pretty amazing because I sat in some of these uh, um, meetings with the contractors and talking about the chillers and the different areas and Mark Andrews, I think was a part of it, but it's definitely more complicated, which is also why anytime we build a new room, we're putting air conditioner, a new building, it's always being implemented. The other thing I'll mention, and um, I know Trustee Moza, we talked about this on Friday too. We were at, we had uh, our executive cabinet retreat, which we do every year. We have our cabinet retreat and then we're going to have um, the general administrators back. And it was nice to actually be in person and face and that was one of the things that we did discuss, and we're going to have a board finance committee coming up soon with Mr. Wall, I believe possibly in August, Tom, you said. Um, but we're going to look at some of that ESSER funding, and one of the things that we'll be recommending to the board is to look at now, it will not take care of the entire district with the old buildings, but again, a phase-in of the HVAC, because you can use some of that for HVAC. And so we'll have a few other areas that we want to look at. Obviously, we've allocated to massive summer programs and there was some other additional state funding for that eight week program, additional interventions, and then staff for, um, you know, supports for our teachers and others, for our students to support in the pandemic. Yeah. But you're also going to look at potentially, um, you know, the expansion over at the college. And I know our president is here, but we're looking at um, that as a important area to uh, allocate some of the funding. So there's more to come but I appreciate you both mentioning it. And I remember Trustee Thorpe, you had brought this up, this is probably three or four years ago when we started to phase in at the older elementary. So we do have cooling stations at the board. We did it with our internal budget. And so we're gonna continue to phase in, especially in the older buildings. Um, you know, If there's ever a decision to spend that approximate 55 million to do the whole district is the last estimate. Again, it could be higher now that's been a few years ago. I was gonna say now ago. it will be, yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, we know it's an important priority. And if we ever want to look at like that balanced calendar or other options during the year, it'd be important to have um, these options. Now, one of the things I would say is during summer programs, it is optional, but we do recommend, and so parents know that because we have these cooling stations and others, that you rotate through them or go outside, or you know, if you have a large area, then make sure you can have multiple classes. And I used to do that as a principal at Salina when I had the new addition air conditioning. So those are other techniques that administrators use when they know it's been warm. But it's really a positive, to be honest, that we've been able to have the summer program. And then it's just mitigating, again, we understand the heat and the, and the that's why I didn't want to go on that. Um, it was so hot yesterday outside, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> and that's all I would have been, you know, really sweating, but appreciate, it was Khaled who took me around. I appreciate the hospitality of the group from ICD. So thank you. Trustee McDonald. Yeah, I just wanted to make a couple of comments about citizen participation. Um, this board has had a process in place, and it's been the same process for decades. And the process is read every meeting out loud prior to citizens' participation so people know what the process is and how it is done. 
and that there is a time limit of three three minutes. But I just take exception with anyone saying that this board has not been responsive to this community, has not listened to this community. We have spent hours and hours listening to um, citizen participation comments. When blue cards are filled out, when online comments are filled out, we have taken them seriously. We've listened to them. And all of us also get people in the community that come up to us and bring their concerns to, to them. And we listen to our community. And we are responsive to our community. So it really, I really take exception when someone says that we are not. And it's just, you have to follow the process. And it is not meant to be a dialogue. It's meant for us to hear, the um, specifically um, citizen participation, it is meant for us to hear your concerns. You bring your concerns to us, and we say there every, way, uh, every meeting that we might not be in a position to answer your concerns, but we listen to them. We do get back with you. We do listen to what you have to say, and we want to hear your concerns. But it cannot be a shouting match. It cannot be a back and forth, because that's not the process, and that is not, um, it doesn't get us anywhere. So please, by all means, if you have concerns, we want to hear about them. But just follow the process. Fill out your blue card. Fill it out in time. Do what you're supposed to do. Follow the rules. Please um, give them to us in time or fill it out online. We have a lot of different options for you. And this board takes the security, the safety, and the education of our students very seriously. We take our community's concerns very seriously. But we cannot have chaos. We have to have you come and follow the process. And again, we may not be able to answer your questions that night, but we will get back with you. But just please be civil, be courteous, be considerate. That's something that our community generally is very well at doing. We're very good at, at caring about each other. But um, we will listen to you, but just please be respectful, be courteous, and follow the process. Thank you. Any additional comments? No, I, I would just like to take on to Trustee McDonald because, um, you know, we, we've seen a lack of civility lately Absolutely. in, in um, the way people are communicating with each other. And I know people are passionate. I know people are um, at their um, breaking points, a lot of them, with um, what the past uh, almost two years have um, brought before them. But the fact is, is that if, if there isn't an orderly um, way to, uh, for us to dialogue, and instead, uh, we end up with a being screamed at where they have take, not taken in anything we are attempting to make a statement about. Then we lose the ability to develop a, a, a good um, relationship with the, with the students, with the staff, and with the community at large. And the, that breakdown is being seen all across the nation. And we, and we saw it at city council meetings. We saw, I was affected by the flood. I know other people were there who were, who were very um, outspoken. You see it on Facebook. It's a constant, continuous um, rage these days. But it doesn't accomplish anything. Absolutely. And we are, we are not able to be productive. We are not able to uh, move forward when all everybody's doing is pointing fingers and blaming each other and calling each other out without listening to each other and coming to a, a meeting place. And I'm sorry tonight's meeting went that way. Everybody had an opportunity to fill out a blue card. That's what the blue cards are for. And they all had an opportunity to get up here. Instead, they chose to sit in the back of the room and shout at us. And that produced nothing for them. I don't understand what 
more we could have done in order to give them their opportunity to speak. They were given an opportunity to speak. They chose not to take that opportunity. So everybody has to be responsible for the, their, um, the way they manage themselves in order to be heard. And we are here to listen. But this is also a business meeting. This meeting is here to do the business of the board. It's not just to listen to the community that has an issue. We have a job to do, and we have to move it forward in a way that we accomplish that. That's the so, three-minute time limit. Yeah, yeah. I, and it, it was unfortunate tonight, and I hope that we don't have to revisit this, even if we have to make tough decisions in the future um, that some parents or staff may not like, please come speak to us in a way that is respectful, that you can hear us, we listen to you, you listen to us. That's all I have to say on that. Thank you. Trustee Moses. I'd like to just to echo the sentiments and comments by Trustee McDonald and Trustee Pipperskoff. I just want to say that we teach respect. We teach kindness to our students. And when they do not see us in that form, then they're not going to go and follow. They actually will follow whatever we do. So um, I would hope that people would use some kindness, be respectful, have a civil conversation. Um, and this board has taken very tough decisions last year. Lives were on the line. And I'm super glad that we did not have any community spread in our schools. And we took all the, all the mitigation and we believe in science 100%. Now, there are many caveats that come along the way, but we're here to listen and to make sure that the right decisions are being made. And I would hope that we, we would use some kindness and some respect to address one another I think we're all very accessible online if you would like to do a one-on-one -on -one or address, it, address us here at the podium. So um, I also hope that what happened today will not be repeated. I just want to add one more thing. Um, anyone that gets up to speak to the board, there is at least one other person out there that has the exact opposite opinion as they do. So if there's 15 people coming with one opinion, there's 15 people somewhere else with the other opinion. Every decision we've made, a large part of the community agrees with it. A large part of the community does not agree with it. That's where we are in this day and age. And that's why we do things through a process. We do listen. But we have to make decisions. And... We do the best we can with the information that we have. So, and that was the way it was before COVID, and that's the way it'll be after COVID. Absolutely. Next item: request for information or future agenda items. Trustee Palichkov. Um, It was brought up tonight, and I had some questions asked to me over the weekend <coughs> about um, permit and facility use with the Edsel Ford. It was a, a quite a um, large event that caught the attention of a lot of community members. So I know we've had had um, uh, reports in the past, so I'm not asking for a, a full re report, but could we have an updated of how much um, money is generated through these permits by each um, group that has come and utilized the different um, facilities over the past year? Actually, Trustee Petlishkov, we're reviewing the policy, actually that facility use policy, and that report also has been generated. So I think the district... Yeah, can, I know I've seen from uh, we shared it with Mr. Mustin and... Yeah, we've seen it numbers. before, but I just want to know, because it was asked of me, well, how much did they pay to... They um, paid a lot. Yeah, so. I, I know, but but if we could have, have those figures at hand, uh, how Absolutely. much each of these organizations are paying when they... I mean specifics. How much do they pay? How much does the, the Lions pay for the football field use? How much does it, you know, um, because the community is asking how much money is that generating? 
Yeah, and that is going to be something we're reviewing in depth, but we have that. And I know last year, obviously, we didn't have as many right. permits. And then we started So up opening. until now, if we can just have the yeah. current yeah. figures. And for the last years? For I mean. the la yeah. Any additional requests for information or agenda items? I had a request last week. Not sure when it was presented about the data as far as student discipline with police or records. So that one, um, and Mr. Mashur is working on it, but we're working with the Dearborn Police because it's they're the ones that kind of have that data. Uh, True. I so, just want to make sure that it's yeah, still it's not, it hasn't been, uh, it, you know, Mr. Mashur has been reaching out, so he's trying to work to see what we can do. But sure. it, it's not off of the, and it's still in the section, um, and I think they put in there that they're still trying to work to get that information. So, you know, because we got to work with them on that. Okay. But it's definitely on the radar, so it may take a little while longer. Great. Hopefully we'll have it by the next board meeting. Next item, then. Future meeting dates, Monday, August 9th, 2021, HFC Board of Trustees Policy Meeting, 6 p.m. at the Administrative Services and Conference Center, Henry Ford College in the Cabinet Conference Room. Monday, August 9th, 2021, HFC Board of Trustees meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Services and Conference Center, Henry Ford College in the Rosanna Boardroom. Um, Monday, August 23rd, 2021, PD12 Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi Boardroom. So as was just mentioned, the college board meeting will return to the college campus for the first time since, was it March or February of 2020? <laughs> Forever ago. Uh, so that one will be back there. We won't be using the P12, uh, this room for that meeting. With that, we are adjourned. Everyone stay safe. Enjoy your summer.